I knew we'd come to this point. I knew, but I still hoped I could affect things, change them. Despite the danger, despite everything that happened in Myrny 13, we're building Babylon, a scientific center for the study of Miriam. We hid it far from the world, hoping to protect humanity from our experiments until we find a way to tame the matter. But Miriam isn't the Atom. As much as we might want to use its remarkable qualities for civilian life, we must be conscious that Miriam is dangerous and unfathomable. And if the military also sees its potential... And yet, I still hoped for something. My scientist's pride prevailed. Now it's time to fix the mistakes that were made. Not long ago, in the deepest, most dangerous anomaly phase, I discovered something unusual. Something that promised the answers I so badly need. But the expedition that was sent there disappeared along with the experimental equipment they were carrying. Almost immediately after that, the Echo Tank's invasion began. Now I need to work even faster and harder to stop this catastrophe. To stop Miriam. Magnus Collectors. None of these technologies are unique. German scientists also discovered Miriam and launched their own research program during the war. Without their work, I'd have had to spend years trying to understand the nature of this strange matter. Nobody knows about this. All developments connected to the secret element were strictly classified. They had their own matter collector, their own Miriam technologies for tanks, and more. They went a lot further than we could have imagined. Our armies would have gladly adopted some of their designs, while others were so inhumane that they had to be destroyed. But their research, their calculations and theories provided me with the solution to my current problem. This is a dangerous idea, I get it. But if I'm right, we might have a chance to not only hold back the Echo Tank's invasion, but to stop them once and for all. To eliminate the very threat of Miriam. If everything goes according to plan, we may soon leave this whole nightmare behind. And it wouldn't just be because of our own work, but also because of our enemy. Our former enemy. You know, Doc, I've been thinking a lot about this Echo Tank invasion since we last spoke. The more I think, the more I'm convinced it's not just an accident or a side effect of our raids. There's something bigger behind this, for sure. You saw the records, you know how they act. Their actions are very precise, targeted, as if someone's controlling them. But who or what? Maybe the matter itself is a sentient being that protects its territory. <laughs> Sounds crazy, right? But after what I've seen, I don't know, Doc. I'm sure the answers are there, in the deepest phase. And the deeper we go, the closer we are to unraveling this mystery. We're about to get it! But are we ready for what we might discover there? Hell, I don't even know if I'm ready myself. You know, Doc, sometimes it feels like we should just stop. Like we should just blow everything to pieces here, destroy all the records and forget about each other, you know? We forget about Miriam and it forgets about us, before it's too late. <sighs> Maybe when I become completely certain of that, that's when I'll no longer be fit to serve as a commander. <laughs> it's all right, Doc. I'm all right. I won't let any of my guys down. Stamp this. 
It's time for me to get back to the rift. Everything's gonna be tip top. sky was no longer our earthly sky. It shattered above Magnus Prime as if the part of the anomaly was there. The first time they broke into our world, they managed to catch us off guard. I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of wailing alarms. Red warning lights were lit up everywhere, and the speakers were mumbling something about an emergency. Within two minutes, I was in my tank, and in three, my platoon was moving out to position. Echo tanks. Here, in our world. I wasn't even that surprised back then. It was bound to happen one day. The strange thing was that they weren't aggressive. They looked disoriented. But the enemy came round and quickly opened fire. No one was going to negotiate with them anyway. We have experienced tank crews, so we dealt with the first group quickly. But then they start coming in waves. New breakthrough coordinates. First, second, third. Dispatch couldn't keep up with them. We were running around the entire complex like crazy till morning when the reinforcements arrived. Back then, during battle, I didn't have time either to feel anything nor to comprehend what was going on. I was doing everything automatically, like a mechanical dummy. Only later, when I was sitting in the barracks and trying to write a report, did I suddenly realize what had happened. We'd opened Pandora's box. We opened it, and now we might not be able to close it. Things will only get worse from here. Are you calling me? Is the paranoia making you lose your minds? What do you think I should be doing now? Sitting here and spending my precious time on your ridiculous conspiracy theories? It's complete chaos over there. More and more rifts are appearing. The echo tanks aren't letting up in their advance, and you're distracting me from my work. Have you seen what's happening in the phases? No? Let me tell you, it's hell over there. And while you're here playing your stupid games, that hell is getting ever closer. And what's this nonsense about intercepting a signal? Do you even understand how comms work inside the anomaly? There are always interference, reflections, echoes over the radio. Tankers are reporting strange sounds every day. They say they're hearing some girl's voice or some other nonsense. So you're gonna take every rustle as an indication of spy activity? It's a real genius idea you've got here. Instead of focusing on the real threat, let's go on a witch hunt against our own people. That'll definitely help us deal with what's going on outside. You know what? I'm not going to spend any more of my time on this. I've got work to do, and if you think about the future even a little, you'll let me get on with it while you focus on protecting Babylon, because if we don't stop this insanity, even the most elusive spies won't matter.
Normally, Echo Tanks just crumble to pieces after they're destroyed. But this one didn't. It was standing there with its engine compartment blown up and smoking, just like a real one. I don't know what made me approach it. It's forbidden, but I did it and opened its hatch. I woke up in the infirmary. I was told that none of it happened, that I didn't open the hatch or even make it to the wrecked tank, and that the tank took as long to vanish as they usually do. But I have a clear memory of looking inside the echo tank. I remember the person who was inside it. They were wearing a strange helmet with pipes. It wasn't just some Miriam goo. It was a human who could be captured and interrogated. They weren't moving or reacting to my attempts to free them. Only the bulbs inside the tank started blinking as if some system had activated. I was trying to pull that damned helmet off the tanker and calm them down. Don't resist. We'll pull you out, and this will all be over. After that, everything's hazy. There was some fog before my eyes and some voices in my head. A lot of voices speaking some strange language, almost like German, calling me or trying to warn me about something. And then the infirmary. The doctors say they barely brought me back. I was unconscious for almost a day. I still can't figure out what it was, or whether it even happened at all. I probably just inhaled some matter due to depressurization and was hallucinating. The tanker, the helmet, the voices. Miriam is poisonous stuff. The professor says it causes you to slowly lose your mind. You might see tankers, girls with flowers, or pink ponies in the sky. I'm going down to the rift again tomorrow. I need to be in shape. Who knows what I might see this time. <laughs> Terry, thick as bricks! There's no point in talking to them anymore. They won't let their toy go now. Now that they have Miriam Technology tanks in their possession, they won't abandon them. They want more. They don't understand that Miriam isn't a magic wand, it's a force we can't control. And as if it has its own will and ability to set its own goals. The army doesn't see what this will lead to. Every new raid to the phases only provokes it, wakes it up. We're on the edge of the abyss, but they keep pushing us forward, blinded by their hunger for power. I tried to explain and warn them again. They wouldn't listen. For them, I'm just another scientist lost in his own theories. They don't see the threat that now looms over the whole of humanity. Enough. The time for talk is over. It's time to act. I'll find a way to stop this insanity before it's too late. these damned rifts in time. It's already clear that if nothing changes, they'll push through us in the end. Command threw in the reserves. A lot of newbies. Most of them haven't even been on an expedition, let alone smelled Miria before. <laughs> it's hard for them. They didn't expect this. They need several days to recover after their first battle. I'm just so used to it that I no longer even think about how abnormal it is when you take out an enemy tank and it just vanishes. But the core of the squad is growing. Some of the newbies are getting ahead of themselves, going charging into the next battle without having rested enough first. It's bad, and it's dangerous. But there's no choice. We still don't have enough men. <sighs> Actually, my only task should be expeditions. It's like the professor says, you need to fight the cause, not the symptoms. He hasn't been looking healthy recently, though. He's a nervous wreck. But that's understandable. He's probably not getting any sleep due to his work on a giant new collector. Magnus Prime. What 
Damn it, if this is all because of it. Because of the Collector. Maybe it's drawing echo tanks from the anomaly, like a magnet. The enemy vehicles have changed, too. They look disoriented at first. They don't anymore. Their attacks are precise, coherent. And the rifts have stopped opening chaotically. It all looks increasingly like a planned assault. As if they know where the weak spots in our defense are, and strike there, and very accurately at that. Like sentient beings. Or controlled ones. Okay, enough of this. I've noticed strange thoughts creeping into my head recently. Over and out. I've always considered myself a scientist, a researcher of the secrets of Miriam. But it appears research alone isn't enough. To protect our world, I need to act. A Miriam bomb. That's my answer. Use the power of Miriam against Miriam itself. Create a weapon of such power that it can destroy the matter itself, the very fabric of this hostile reality. There's no way the military would allow me to do it, of course. But I'm building it right under their noses. Right inside Magnus Prime. For them, Miriam is a resource with which to create new weapons. They won't let it go. But I can't let their ambitions stand in the way of our survival. I must finish what I've started. I just need a little more time, and the bomb will be ready. It's risky, I know. The consequences might be unpredictable, but the alternative... The alternative is much worse. I'm ready to become who I must. A scientist. A soldier. A villain in the eyes of some. Somebody needs to do what's necessary. And I'm ready to get my hands dirty so that everyone else can live in a clean world. It's time to finish this. There are more and more echo tanks, and the more we destroy, the more they crawl out of there, like some kind of Hydra. There's news, though. They say the Professor has discovered something new, and now he knows how to stop it. I want that to be true. I've known Merkelov for many years and seen him change under the burden of responsibility. He's becoming more closed and detached. But I still believe in him. He won't let us down. Me and the guys are running on fumes here in the Anomaly, and on the approaches to Babylon. We'll do everything that depends on us to make sure the Professor has enough time and strength to finish the job. We'll go down to any phase. We could find anything at all there. We could blow it up or drag it up here. Just as long as all this isn't in vain. I'm still thinking about that person. The one I saw in the echo tank back then. I mean, or that I thought I'd seen. Maybe they're not just tanks. Maybe there really are people inside. Or something that used to be people. No. That's stupid. How can there be people in there? They're echo tanks. Spawn of the matter. All right, I'm talking nonsense again. The professor will figure it out. He's smart. He'll find a way to finish this mess. Our mission is to hold the defense, and that's what we'll do. Till the last, to the bitter end. That's it. Time to work. Over and out.
Operation Dark Edelweiss. A code name I found in the German archives. At first, the Germans wanted to build a Miriam bomb, the ultimate weapon. They conducted tests using a low power charge. The destruction was minor, but a chain reaction began that affected all the matter stock in their research facility. As a result, all Miriam within a significant radius was deactivated and lost its qualities. Their scientists couldn't open new rifts at the complex anymore. They decided to abandon their bomb development in favor of a new priority direction. The use of Miriam subspace for transportation. According to the documents, they plan to build an entire network of transit bases in that subspace called Dark Towers. Throughout Europe and beyond, imagine you build bases in lower phases, build up your forces and vehicles there, and then you open the path and strike where the enemy isn't expecting you at all, behind the front line or, or in capital cities. The Blitzkrieg strategy perfected. Fortunately, they weren't able to do it. They didn't manage to develop an exit technology. They needed a beacon, an anchor. Their entry point was destroyed during the bombings. Most of their scientists and engineers died or went missing. Nobody knew what happened to those who were already at the subspace bases. Until recently. looking for new phases with high levels of Miriam for my bomb. I couldn't imagine what I would find. At first, there were strange radio signals, distorted, barely discernible. Then I heard a child's voice singing a tune in a strange language. It was so unexpected, so out of place. I called her Gretchen. I tried to locate the source of her signal, and the deeper I descended into subspace, the stronger the signal became. Until I finally found it. A German base, hidden in one of the deepest phases right under our research center. That was quite the find. An entire complex conserved in space and time. With all their vehicles, weapons, maybe even people stuck there since the war. At first, I didn't know what to do with my discovery. Report it to management, continue the research on my own. But then, I realized it could be the key to solving my problem. If I could establish contact with them, make them work for me, bring me the Miriam I needed for the bomb, but there was one thing I overlooked. I underestimated them. Them and their zealotry. them to destroy Miriam, but I was wrong. It was them who used me. They used my pride, my desperation. I sent a tank with a relay to them. I thought I could outwit them, but that had been their plan all along. They wanted me to open the path for them and give them a beacon in our world. And now they're here because of me. Ghosts of the past, ready to sow chaos and destruction. It's my fault. My responsibility. But it's not too late to fix it. We still have a chance. If you're listening to this recording, I'm dead. 
that. You must know the truth. The tank I sent with the relay inside, it's the key. The key to closing the path and cutting off their base from our world. You need to reach that tank and get it out of there. They won't be able to hold the passage open. After you block them, don't wait for a new invasion. Destroy Miriam. The bomb is 96% ready. It just needs a little more Miriam. Its power will be enough for the chain reaction to deactivate Miriam across the entire planet with minimal destruction. Babylon must fall to save us all.